The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesamento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesamento. Okay, good afternoon, sports fans. This is Larry Pesavento for TFNN, and uh, we're having some pretty active markets today. We've bounced off the sixty-one, excuse me, the seven eight six retracement in the S and P down there at that uh, thirteen nineteen level. So we need to hold above that. Uh, frankly, the markets, you know, they still look rather pathetic, but this is a, this is a very important spot where they should be holding. Uh, I posted the uh, into Tiger TV earlier this morning. Uh, the fact that the cash S&P has actually made the 61% retracement, you know, coming off the low of, uh, you know, June 4th, which was the, um, you know, the new, uh, that was a full moon and lunar eclipse. So that was a very important one to look at. So it's very important that the market stay above 1319 today in the, uh, in the S&P. It's just... Uh, uh, it, in, in the futures, anyway, that, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, also, you know, the gold broke below the 786 and went down and tested 1355. Uh, I, I don't know how many times. I think it's the third or fourth time, and it's in the last few weeks that we've done that. It's held it so far. We've had a little $10 rally off of that, but here again, you know, we really need to get it to turn around. Silver's acting a little bit more bullish than we have, uh, you know, in the gold recently, so that could be a positive sign. You know, but we need to, uh, you know, we need to wait and see if this is going to, you know, uh, come to pass or not. Now, uh, we're going to have Rich Anderson on uh, later, uh, later this morning, some, well, in the next few minutes, I would imagine, to talk about some of the, you know, the big things that are happening in the business. And, uh, and of course, there are a lot. And, you know, everyone is concerned about the safety of their capital, and I'm going to get Rich to address this. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the CFT has really dropped the ball on this, folks. Let me tell you. It has been a uh, just a, a horrible way of what they've been doing as far as uh, you know being able to monitor these things. I mean, I, I'm just a little one guy deal, and I've got three license. I think I, I think I have three or four licenses that I've had for years, and they they come out and they audit me uh, once every few years. So they were here a year or so ago, and three people come. They spend a whole week every day with me. They stay in a four or five star hotel. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, and everything is right here, transparent. I got one account, you know, I have th that I just do one account. That, uh, and, and, uh, and yet this is what they, that, what they do. And here, here a guy that's got 1,850 accounts that's stealing money for many years, and he gets away with it. And there's something not right in this world, so they've got to get that straight. And these guys in Washington, it's just every department in Washington seems to be, seems to be screwed up. I, I don't know, you know, how they get uh, into there. I guess it's a power struggle, but... You know, that's, let's get off the soapbox, Larry. Talk about the markets. Okay, as um, soon as we get rich here, we'll, we'll talk about some of these safety issues and also about the corn because, you know, we've had a tremendous uh, swings in corn uh, well over almost a dollar a bushel, as a matter of fact, in the last day or so. We had, a, a, I believe, a 60-cent drop yesterday, and we've had a 40-cent rally today. Uh, the corn has almost made a 786 retracement uh, of the whole move. Uh, from yesterday's down to yesterday's up, uh, wheat has already made the 786 back, so uh, that could have been just a big washout day yesterday uh, in corn, and the market could continue to go higher. The, there's no question that the corn crop is uh, in really bad straits, folks. It uh, doesn't get any worse, you know, than what we, uh, I think it's been 19, uh, I believe the year was uh, 1974 when we've had something you know, as bad as this. Uh, we've got Rich Anderson on the line now from Anderson Capital Management. Uh, are you there, Rich? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, perfectly. Well, I think the first thing we better address is uh, the things that are going on at, uh, you know, what happened with uh, MF Global and PFG. I'd like for you to address to our friends here, you know, you've been in the business uh, almost forever, and uh, of course I know that because I've known you for almost forever, but give, give the folks what they could do to, to protect themselves uh, in some of these, uh, you know, turbulent, tr turbulent times against these dishonest people? Well, you know, 
I, I think you have to, uh, you get what you pay for, right? And uh, that's one of the main sayings. You have to deal with uh, brokerage firms that have, are well capitalized. How do we find uh, this out? How do the people find this out, Rich? Uh, there, there's, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a listing. Uh, the CFTC provides that information. Oh, yeah, that, that, they're a great source of information. You know what? You know what? <laughs> I will get you a source and, and uh, email it to you, and then you can, uh, I, I don't have, you know, I'm not a public person like you are, but you may have a website or you can and mention it tomorrow. But th- th- it's all about capital. And w- what happened is the markets went vertical, the grain markets went vertical because of this weather problem, and their capital gets sucked away because everybody's on margin call, and then they find out, oh, gee, they really don't have any capital. And, you know, the, the tide went out, and they found out they were naked. Well, Rich, uh, I find the, it the only thing you can do to protect yourself is to be with well-capitalized firms. Mm-hmm. Um, the rules, when MF Global went down, the rules changed. Up until that point, my understanding was always that the money was guaranteed by the clearing firm, you know. I, I but once the clearing too, firms yes. went from non-profit, you know, to a profit thing, that that world changed. So yeah. you really have to know who you're doing business with, and you know, and and you can know these people for a long time, and then all of a sudden they surprise you. So you you have to look at their capitalization of these firms. Uh, I will provide you with a link that will you know give you some idea. Um, but that that's that's how it's done. Um, you, you know, c- keep in mind, and then in the crash in 1987. Of the six major brokerage firms, and we're talking the Payne Webers of the world, the E.F. Huttons, the Shearsons, Merrill Lynch's. You know, <laughs> Some of these the people five don't of the even six know who those names are. <laughs> and they had a meet. They had a phone conference call with uh, with uh, Greenspan that night, and said, "We'll yeah. open the window and make you know any of you need money. You get any mm-hmm. all you need." Yeah, I and, remember. I remember know, that. Came back that was the start days. of the the plunge protection team. That was the right. beginning of that. Yes. Right. So. It, but the simple answer to your question is, I wished I knew. I don't know. Um, you know, you've got to be aware of the capitalization of the firm. Uh, the CFTC dropped the ball. I mean, it's so easy for them to check bank records these days electronically, and they weren't bothering to do that. Um, sure, they're suing uh, the firm now, but it's you know it's too late. The cows are out of the barn, and you're closing the door. Yeah. Yeah, that's for that sure. That doesn't work, and that's basically yeah. what's happened. The cows are out of the barn, and and now they're closing the door. I mean, this this is ridiculous. I was, you know, I'm beside myself that that uh, the regulatory bodies that are supposed to control this now they weren't a clearing member, so the NFA was supposed to be the one uh, examining them. The it's really CFTC, a sad day in our business, no question about yeah, it. Yeah, the CFTC, uh, you know, will audit the uh, clearing members. And they'll bring a team of, uh, you know, five or six people, and they'll camp out for a month in a brokerage firm mm-hmm. in Chicago, going through all kinds of records and stuff. Oh, I know. They come, they've come. they been to my place for, you know, uh, four days, twice. Right. And, you know, you know how big I operate. I have two 42-inch computers and one and one account, and that, yeah. you know, one hedge fund account, and that's it. I mean, it doesn't take 20 minutes to see the whole thing. Yeah, and, that, <laughs> and they give you two hours' notice. Yeah. And, and by, by the way, on margin calls, when a firm gets a margin call from the exchange, they have one hour to meet it. Yeah. It's not like they've got three or five days to get, get No, it's one hour. Yeah. And so you can see how all of a sudden, you know, this $200 million that's supposed to be there, $220 million at the U.S. Bank, you know, they didn't have it. Okay, Rich, how bad is the corn crop? Well, I was in South Dakota at my farm last weekend, and from Minnesota to South Dakota is the garden spot of the country, and we're, we're dry as a bone. Uh, and yet, I mean, the corn, the stuff looks great, but it's been so hot that when it gets really hot, the corn leaves circle up, you know, they curl up Protect tighter than yeah. a pineapple. Yeah. It's going to be 100 degrees next week. This is scary. I mean, this they took the uh, the yield down the most they ever took it down in the report yesterday morning, um, and this is scary. I think... Yeah. Uh, you know, I just look at the charts, and I think the corn can go to 850, and the beans to 17. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We, we've had a major drought in the Southwest the last couple of years, and we've liquidated a lot of cattle herd. Uh, I mean, 
some of these areas are not going to have feed for their animals, so there'll, there'll be some liquidation, and you know that of course yeah. puts pressure on the cow. Yeah. Uh, and people it, don't it could, realize it could it. get uh, it could be beyond belief because what happens is that the heat gets the corn needs to recover. It curl, the, the leaves curl up during the day, and then at night when it cools off, they open up and they recover. But there hasn't been any cooling off at night to recover. Mm-hmm. This is the problem. Yeah. And, and there's you, no moisture. I mean, at this time of the year, corn cr- plant needs about a half inch of moisture a day to, um, you know, maximize yield. Mm-hmm. And, it, and that what it does is it tap, its tap root goes down four or six inches to get that moisture, but there's no moisture. Rich, explain to our folks, uh, you know, how this relates to cattle and hog markets on the feeding side of it, you know, how, how much it will affect the cattle and hogs down the road. Well, um, take the, the hogs first. The back-end hogs, and I'm taking April, you know, Feb, April, June, they'll kind of follow the corn. As the corn goes up, they'll get higher. Uh, the front end's determined by export business and, uh, you know, and retail demand. And the export business was big in the last couple of years from China, but all of a sudden they've increased their their uh, hog herd by 10%, so they aren't quite importing as much as they were. But the cattle is a different story. If we don't have feed for cattle, you know, you'll just sell them at whatever because it's going to cost you too much to buy the feed because the feed's so short it, it goes mm-hmm. up in price astronomically, kind of like corn. Yeah, so the prices go down short term, right. but so then long term so look out. You just liquidate yeah. your, your animals, so that'll make a year from now's uh, prices very good. Mm-hmm. But it'll cause some pressure on the front end. You know, when the nearby will. Um, so what would you be? What, what would you pulled. be watching in in cattle as far as uh, you know? Would you be looking at feeder cattle or the live cattle? Which one would you be watching for? Let's say the spring of next year. That would be when the first start to hit, wouldn't it? Right, right. Once once we get through to this liquidation. I'd be looking at uh, I'd be looking at uh, say uh, Feb you know I'd be looking at say February cattle on back and uh, you know there's a saying that gentlemen don't trade cattle in August so because seasonally <laughs> we typically buy <laughs> there's lots of sayings as you know Larry that's just yeah one of them. that's, that's uh, for sure uh, don't trade anything that can kick your you know <laughs> yeah but um, we can't say that on the air Rich <laughs> well, I, I know or, but, but I've been kicked a lot anyway. Yeah. Um, the bottom in the cattle normally comes in August because it's hot and people aren't that hot, you know, feel that good about eating a bunch of meat. So, and and the and the cattle feeder, if I'm a cattle feeder out in South Dakota, as an example, I want to get rid of my cattle because it's going to be really hot. And last year we had uh, clients that uh, had a hundred head just drop dead overnight because it was too hot. And they, and, wow. the, and, they, and if there's if there's no wind and it's really hot. They just have trouble breathing, and they just die. Mm-hmm. It's, it's okay, just a- Rich. Well, listen, uh, we'll probably have you on in a week or so when they uh, plow the corn crop under, okay? I, I, it's unbelievable. The pictures I've seen, yeah. it's unbelievable. But I will get you a yeah. link to, so you can kind of see what the difference is. Yes, I'll share are. that with all of our viewers. H- have a nice holiday, Rich. You too. Bye. Or weekend, I mean. Okay, bye-bye. 877-927-6648. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC. Member SIPC.
you've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, folks, we're back. Um, we can only have Rich for a short period of time uh, this morning because he's rather busy with the grain markets. He has a very uh, he runs uh, Anderson Capital Management, and he has a, a you know quite a few very large clients um, that are, well most of them well most all of them are either farmers or grain hedgers. So he gets real busy when the markets are moving like they are right now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the TBT. I thought it was a pretty good buy at fifteen oh one. We've had it. Uh, we've gone below that. Uh, I posted the chart on the uh, Treasury bonds over the last couple of days, and uh, today we've made a 786 retracement up here at this 1517 level. And uh, if this uh, you know breaks out above that, then you know I would stand aside on the uh, the TBT. If we make a new low uh, on on the, on the contract size of that, it's you know it's only 30 40 cents uh, risk on that, but that's what you have to do. You've got to stand aside because you know these markets can move uh, you know a great deal uh, in one direction very very quickly and you don't want to stand inside of this there's too many opportunities you know to uh, to to make money you don't want to you want to focus on not losing and that's the the real focus of uh, you know con trying to control your risk so if that tbt makes a new low um, I it's somewhere below 15 I guess 1470 something like that 1460 uh, I would I would stand aside and we'll we'll get it right once one of these days but um, Today might not be uh, the day to uh, uh, to look at it. So that's uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind. So uh, we'll just move on to the next one we want to look at here. 
is uh, we haven't talked about natural gas for the last, um, uh, la- uh, we didn't even cover it last week, but, you know, we made that huge AB equals CD pattern. That was a perfect uh, ABCD pattern uh, that that completed in the uh, natural gas down at the 21 or $2.16 per cubic feet. And then we rallied up to $3 per cubic feet. And now what we're waiting for is we're waiting for a nice AB equals CD move coming from point D. And that's what we'll be looking for for a potential buy. What we'll do is we'll look at UNG uh, for you folks because it's much easier to trade than the natural gas futures. But it follows along relatively well, you know, with the natural gas. But we want to keep a, keep an eye on that one because we've certainly had a, you know, a really big move you know, coming off of that 188 level when the whole world was, you know, bearish and then we rallied up, came down to the C point. And uh, the important part, if you get a chance to go into Tiger TV, folks, uh, the, the one, and Steve, Steve Rhodes and Tom have, are always talking about this, but this is a perfect example of what happens in an ABCD leg. If you'll notice um, uh, around, the, uh, around the 15th, 16th of June, uh, the, the big move that occurred in the one day where uh, you know, natural gas exploded coming off the C point. Well, when that happens, you, you almost uh, have about 100% confirmation that that thing's probably going to make the ABCD, and the CD leg could even be 1.27 or 1.618. So, uh, you know, it's, just remember that. When you see that real wide-ranging bar, that was the biggest bar, uh, I believe, that we've had in, you know, well over six or seven months, and one of the larger ones, uh, you know, over the whole uh, last couple of years. So that's why when you see those things uh, moving like that, it's important. And those of you that follow Tom's work with the volume, when he, when he starts yelling volume down there at point C, pay attention to what that man's telling you because, you know, he studied it uh, quite a bit, and it's a big, big help you know, when you're looking at these things. So that's the uh, thing to remember when you're looking at these ABCD patterns, and it makes it uh, important to help you to move this. This is much easier than Elliott Wave, folks, because you don't have to count the waves. All you're looking for is the retracements and the ratios to look for. You don't care whether it's a 1, 3, or a 5, anything like that. You're just trying to match the pattern with the ratio, and that's really what you're what you're trying to look at when you're when you're looking at these particular patterns. Now, we've had a we've had a situation now in the uh, the euro where we've come down and we've actually hit a very important spot uh, overnight. We hit the daily 1.27 expansion at uh, 121.64, um, and uh, the actual number I think was 124. Uh, 121.65, um, uh, so it was within one tick of the exact number, and that means that we could possibly get a rally uh, in the euro. And, and believe me, it's probably just a short-term rally because the longer-term charts on you know the uh, euro says it really wants to go down to that you know 117, you know 115 level. But the U.S. dollar index has completed the ABCD pattern up here at this 8360 level. We went up and made a a 1.27 expansion at 8401. And we mentioned uh, on yesterday's show that if it closes above 8401, you know, you don't want to be short the U.S. dollar because if it gets above that, you know, it could really, uh, you know, really move very, very quickly. Um, I will uh, post the chart for the euro right after the break. So if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning. Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades have been 
been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customer capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and we'll get back to talking about these grains uh, for just a second. And um, the main thing that we want to remember is that, uh, y you know, if this weather gets really hotter than where it is now, we could, you know, we've already lost more than 8% of the crop. And remember, the corn crop is our largest agricultural crop uh, in the country. It's one of the, in the U.S., it's one of the largest in the world. And so, believe me, if it will affect people around the world. People die because of this, not just because of the drought, because they don't get food the way they want it. Because in the food chain, you know, we take care of ourselves first, and then we worry about everybody else second. And uh, this is unfortunate how the world works. But uh, there's a, uh, I heard a great quote today. I get to use it right now. It's a Darwinian world that we live in. I had to call my friend uh, Byron Tucker to find out what that meant. And it basically means survival of the fittest. And I guess this is what's happening in the grain markets right now. So uh, what I'm going to do is to put into Tiger TV is to show you the long-term chart uh, on the November soybeans. Uh, you know, they're up near the, the 1550 level. Uh, the important thing to look at here, again, if you look at that point C, 
uh, that occurred right around the full moon of June 4th when the market exploded out of here. Uh, and it has, you know, gone well over, uh, you know, $3 a bushel. That's $15,000 in a matter of a few months. Oops, let's call that a few weeks. And uh, the important thing is, is we hit that 1.618 twice. Uh, yesterday we hit it. We, we had a big correction. And right now we're having a little bit of a correction, you know, moving backwards uh, to it. But if we close above uh, that 1580 level in the uh, November soybeans, this means that, you know, this thing could just go parabolic. And it could be like what we had in 19, uh, 1988. Uh, that was, uh, you know, a very, very bullish year. And I have to tell you a funny story about that because I was doing astro cycles um, and, it was, and I had a, uh, a hotline and people would call in and get my recommendations and uh, I, I recorded on the hotline the, the night before I said if uh, you know July soybeans close above 760 you know a bushel you know for God's sake you know don't be short because they'll probably go limit up you know a couple days and boy sure enough they closed about uh, I think it was around whatever the price was it was about a nickel higher than what I thought and uh, boy the next few days they just went limit 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 that's when limits were 30 cents and it uh, you know really went crazy and about a month and a half later uh, UPS showed up at my door and had a case of Don Perriome, my, my one of my favorite champagnes from a uh, farmer in Iowa who was one of my customers and we later became good friends and uh, he sent a case of Don Perriome and I called him up and said, what is this for? And he says, well, he said, I loaded up on those beans that day. He said uh, to buy them if they went above, uh, you know, uh, 565 or whatever the number was. I said, that's not what I said. I said, don't be short. <laughs> I did drink the champagne, though, over a period of many years it took me to drink that champagne. Uh, if you count years between June and July. Okay, now anyway, the the, the difference between what's happening now in the, um, in the grain markets is the fact we have an old crop, you know, the, that's been harvested and set in there, uh, you know, sitting in the bins and people are using it. But the problem is, is the corn that's coming in is supposed to be a big crop and it's not going to be that. We, you can just look at the pictures. I mean, Dr. Ruth, you know, sent me some pictures of her crop and she's only about five foot one and you can see the, the uh, corn is only up to about about her waist and it should be you know two feet over her head so they're having major problems with the corn and the beans there's no question about it uh you know i i don't know whether to uh uh you know i got out of mine you know way too soon i missed the last uh you know 40 cents or so in corn which i i'm not complaining about that i mean this is the way i you know try to do i've been in this business too long i'm not trying to get the you know the last ten cents in the trade. That's not uh, that's not what I try to do, and uh, so all I'm doing now is to see you know where it's going to go. But if we close above that um, that fifteen eighty in the beans, and if we close above uh, seven fifty in December corn, you know like Rich said, you could easily go to eight fifty or even nine fifty because there's there's nothing else you can replace with corn. I mean you can't you you can't feed rice to uh, to uh, hogs and cattle. And, uh, you know, we, we don't eat a lot of rice in this country, so, you know, it's really uh, going to be a real interesting thing if uh, if these markets, you know, do go, you know, parabolic. This this affects us a lot, folks, because this is going to mean that the price of food for, uh, for uh, uh, hogs and for cattle, you know, down the road are going to get very, very expensive. And so as the prices drop because they're liquidating the herd, this is where you want to be buying the far outs. And we, sh- we should, the far out means the next year's cattle, and we want to be watching that. And other people, there's some pretty smart people out there that will be doing the same thing. So what we've got to do is to try to time it, you know, by looking at, you know, some of these patterns that we're, that we're watching. Well, the good part about this whole thing is, is that the rest of the world, you know, we still have, uh, you know, crops in the rest of the world, and the, the rice crop, uh, you know, the, the, the rice production is held up relatively well, and the prices are still... Uh, very, very reasonable. They're, they're way under what they were last August. And so that means that, you know, the, the rest of the world should be okay. It's a question is how bad this corn crop is going to be. Now, uh, Rich mentioned that the weather for the next uh, week or so is supposed to be in the hundreds, and if that's the case, it's probably going to knock another 10% out of the yield. But believe me, at any time they get a good rain, this crop could come back just faster than a you know a rabbit you know being chased by a coyote because this thing could really. You, I've seen this happen more than once where these crops looked absolutely horrible and they get a good rain and you wouldn't believe you think they'd been in a greenhouse uh, during the time of the drought. So you have to be be careful of this, uh, you know, and and believe me, in 
you, you don't have any control over a weather market because if they get rain over a weekend, you could come in and they'll be down the limit, you know, two or three days in a row if, if the crop comes back really quick. So weather markets are more difficult to trade, and you don't really, uh, you don't really need those. The other, the other markets that we trade, like a Forex and the gold and silver and things like that, are much easier to trade, and, um, you know, they trade 24 hours also, and so that makes it, uh, you know, much, much easier to trade than the grain markets. Remember, we were buying the corn. You know, back in uh, you know in May when we were talking to Rich about the potential for you know some hot weather coming this year, and we had no idea it was going to be a drought. We were just looking at the Gartley pattern in December corn down there at five dollars a bushel, and that's all we were looking at. You know, there's nothing to do with you know fundamentals or anything like that. We were just looking at the chart, and it happened to work this time. You know, it doesn't work all the time, and of course nothing else does either. But the main thing is is that uh, if you follow the patterns, they will give you a pretty good idea of, uh, you know, it'll lead you to the promised land, you know, more than uh, than most other things that you have, uh, you know, that you're looking at. Now, the um, I also posted into Tiger, um, to, get, to get off this, since we're talking about money and crops and stuff, uh, I, I posted into the Tiger TV the chart on the euro and showing you the importance of that low at the 120, uh, 1.2150 level. I believe I think as I was as I recall the low was 12160 and the the number was 12158 so as long as we stay above 12150 you know that's what we're we're really looking for I had, if you'll go back into um I think I'll I'll repost that one for the euro because several people evidently have missed it and I want, had a question about it, so I'll just put it up there. You'll be able to see. It actually missed the exact number by, um, at least so far. I mean, it could still go down and get it, but it missed it by about three pips. And so what we're looking for now is that, that we should get a pretty good rally. Uh, all we've done now is we made a 1.2 expansion off of the, the low that we made uh, just two days ago. And, uh, you know, we got the, the weekend coming in here uh, after tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we'll have a pretty good idea if it's going to hold. But believe me, you know, the way these markets are looking uh, worldwide, uh, it, they've got to hold up here. Or we've got some serious – we already have serious problems. But they – I'm just – my anticipation is – I shouldn't say the word hope. But my anticipation is that we can make this for two more weeks into the end of July – and then we would have a really good chance to, you know, really get to the short side on these things. And I, would, nothing would make me happier than to see a really nice rally in stocks uh, to get them up into this level, uh, into that 12, uh, excuse me, that 1350, 1360 level again in the S&P. That's not very far away, but uh, right now it looks like it's a lifetime away. But this is what I'm assuming uh, will happen. Um, okay, I posted the uh, in the Tiger TV that you'll see the euro uh, versus the the, um, the U.S. dollar in there, and it shows the 1.27 down there at that 121.50 level. We close below that, folks. Uh, the next stop is in the 118, 117 area, and uh, you know it could make that very very quickly because uh, you know the world is getting a little scared. Um, the the other one that we talked about and we started the show and I brought it in was the gold the fact that it's held this uh, this uh, fifteen fifty five per ounce we're only ten ten dollars an ounce better than that we're still down ten dollars on the day uh, we, if we close below fifteen uh, fifty an ounce in gold uh, that's going to be a very a very bad situation as far as a technical picture and if we do that then we'll we'll reevaluate it but right now you know, there's there's still some support. At 1522, but we've hit it three times, and and usually on the fourth time it will probably fail. That was a thing that W. D. Gann worked on many times. That was his, in other words, it'll hold for three times, but on the fourth time it will fail. So this is why the gold is so important between that 1555 and that 1522 level. It's just, uh, it's really, really uh, important that it holds this this level. And and you know, the if this market does come unglued in the in the stock market, like I in in the whole economies around the world, like I think is going to occur. It's because of what's happening in the debt cycle. I've said since I first met Tom, or well, I met him a long time ago, but since I start, started doing the show in 07, the, um, this is based on a debt cycle. Uh, once we broke that cycle from August the 15th of 2007, that told me that we are in the same type of cycle that we had in 1837, which was the panic of 1837, which was all based on crooked bankers. And uh, that's pretty much what, uh, you know, what we've had. And uh, it's certainly been that way. So this is what we'll be looking at. So 
Uh, that's what we're watching um, now. That we go back to the to the bonds because someone had a question. You know, do I really think the bonds are still going to go lower? Uh, yes, I do. I, I I might be wrong on the top. They might get above the the 152, 153 level, and and if they get to 160, you know, we have a, a little wager, not a money wager, but I have to ride in. Uh, Tom's boat. Uh, he, he'll make me row, but that's okay. Uh, we won't go very far offshore, that's for sure. But uh, I don't know if we're going to get to 160 or not. That would mean the long-term 30-year rates would be at 2.5%. And I notice now that the 30-year uh, mortgages are uh, running under 4% easily now, two point, or running around 3.8%. But, uh, you know, many people are having a hard time, you know, getting mortgages. Uh, my my kids both have uh, uh, one of them has a doctorate, the other has has an MBA, and they both they make substantial money and had substantial uh, a down payment on the house that they just bought, and yet it took almost forever to get the the uh, you know the money for the mortgage because of uh, the way that they scrutinized you know what the kids had done and how long they've been working in their educations and everything you know three four four years ago they could have walked in off the street and you know said that they were making three hundred grand grand a year and could have bought a million dollar house oh we've got a call from uh, Singapore from our friend William he's our only caller from Singapore how are you William oh I'm good thank you very much Mr Pesento how are you sir I'm good what can I do for you my friend. Okay, actually, I was think of asking you, uh, you know, the uh, Apple, you know, I think recently it's gone to a high, and based on your methodology, we, I think we managed, managed to nail that, you know, there is, I think, 786 retrace, I mean, the retracement from the top, and uh, so it, it came down. So now, as it comes down, I'm trying to look at the potential support, you know, for uh, this particular counter. So I'm I'm trying to figure out whether do I draw, you know, from the real bottom, which is actually on the 18th of May, or should I draw it somewhere near, you know, um, you know, uh, 28th of June? There's the, I, I, the, you know. That's a good point. Now, you know, we, we try to control our risk, you know, uh, the best yeah. way we can. Now, you could draw that uh, retracement. But the best way to do it is to take it off the previous swing, which would be the one that came in, you know, in uh, in late May on the, uh, or excuse me, late June on the twenty uh, on the twenty eighth of June. You know, we rallied up for eight days into the seven eight six, at the exact seven eight six at six nineteen, and now we backed off to fifty percent of that. Today's low was fifty percent right. of that low on the twenty eighth. So that's your first sign of support. And uh, right. because, you know, because the S&P held where it was, I would consider, you know, this is a three down days in Apple, and it's still in an uptrend. It's one of the more powerful stocks. You certainly want to be taking some profits, you know, in the right. stock at this point. And then, um, you know, I would move your stop down quite a bit because it should not get above uh, 610 if it's bearish. If it gets above 610, you know, then we'll be able to, uh, you know, say that it could go a lot higher. But right now, it looks like it could still go down into the, you know, the 584 area per share. Okay. Actually, uh, I, I do look at these two points. That means the late June, which is 28th of, uh, I think, 28th of June, and the other one, uh, the, the reason low, which is uh, 18th of May. Could you enlighten me that, you know, of these two points, why is it that, you know, the late June is more uh, significant compared to the, um, you know, the 18th of May, which is the reason low? Okay. the the only di The only difference is, is uh, William, is that I'm looking at it in a context of how much I have to risk, you know, when right. I'm when I'm putting on the trade. So I want to take the last swing so that I can see, you know, whether I'm going to be right or wrong or not. Because we, you know, it okay. stopped at the seven eight six, and now it's backed off to the fifty percent level. So that's the what I have to. If I go back farther, there has to be more risk. You see, because right. now I'm looking at you know larger swings, and I'm trying to. You know, protect my capital. Okay. okay? Thank you. Hey, very listen, much. thanks for calling in, my friend, and I hope Thank you have you. a wonderful weekend. Yes, you too have a wonderful weekend, too. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye. 877 927 6648. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, 
with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Just like that, another month has passed and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway has come to an end. Each market day in June, one lucky winner was chosen to receive a one-ounce silver bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver and TFNN. We'd like to thank all the listeners that chose to participate, and if you weren't lucky enough to be a winner this time around, be on the lookout in the coming months for another opportunity to win a one-ounce silver bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver and TFNN. Thanks so much and good trading. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, folks, uh, we'll wind up the show. I posted a chart into the Tiger TV on sugar, and it basically is a beautiful technical picture of the patterns that we look at, the Gartleys, the butterflies, the three drive patterns. But the important thing to look at on this sugar chart is what's happened since uh, the full moon and lunar eclipse of June 4th. Uh, we made a low down in sugar at around 18 cents a pound, and we rallied about um, 20 20 percent into the gap area that occurred in April. Uh, that's when the market gapped down below $23 per pound, and it left a huge gap at the uh, 786 level. And if you go back and look at the sugar chart, no matter how many years you go back, you'll see that these, these, these gaps are usually filled. But the importance of this one is the fact that it's taken six weeks 
in the middle of a you know roaring bull market in in all the grains and yet sugar uh, which is a carbohydrate should have had a little bit more sympathetic buying in my opinion so the fact that it could not get above those uh, that 786 level in April means means a great deal in my opinion on a technical basis and this is what we're doing and uh, oh by the way I wanted to thank everybody that uh, attended the uh, webinar uh, last night we had a I, I really enjoyed it. I went so fast it was the fastest ninety minutes I think I've ever done. Uh, the questions were great and I, I really really enjoyed it. And uh, these were the kind of things we were talking about. By the way, is what was on the sugar chart. So um, this is what we're looking at. Okay, we got to wind up the show here in just a few minutes. There's really important things going on today, folks. One is if those bonds get a bit of one fifty one twenty in the June bonds, uh, that means they're probably going to break out of that uh, you know one fifty two level. That would be my guess because that would be breaking above the seven eight six. But the more important ones for most of the folks uh, that are in the markets. Uh, is the fact that the S&P really needs to stay above that um, 1318 level. That's a 61% retracement. That was the first chart that I put into Tiger TV was the fact that that cash S&P chart stopped exactly at the 61% retracement coming off of that June 4th lunar eclipse low. So as long as that holds, we still have a potential for one more rally, and that rally would bring us into the uh, couple weeks, would take us into the uh, the next uh, uh, new moon uh, coming in on the, I believe the next new moon comes in on the uh, 19th, as I recall. Yeah, comes in on the 19th, and then after that, you know, we're going to have another, um, we'll have another full moon uh, in August, I believe, is the one that uh, comes in on August the 2nd, and that's the one that I really want to be looking at. Okay, we've got a uh, call from uh, Vince in New Jersey. Are you there, Vince? I sure am, Larry. How are you? Hey, how are you, my friend? My goodness, oh, I haven't surprise, heard your voice surprise. in a long time. <laughs> well, you know, as my wife had emailed you, I had the stroke. Yes. You know, and then I've been held. I, I just got home last week. Well, our, but, all our prayers are with you, my friend. I hope you feel better. I had the best doctor in the world, Larry. His oh. name is Jesus. Ah, Can't go yes. wrong with him. Yeah, yeah, he's he's done a lot of healing in the past that no one complains about, I guess. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I just wanted to say hello. Okay, thank and, you very much. And believe me, bye. everybody in the Tiger TV and all the Tiger uh, Tigers as us will give you a lot of prayers, my friend. You're uh, you're a really nice fellow. Even though you live in New Jersey, you're still a nice fellow. Well, I'm not far from Philadelphia, so yeah. I can't be all bad. That's for sure. That's that's where the other little prince lives. He's he's a little uh, sick today. He's got he's got a little bit of a cold. He's we've we've taken him to daycare. Uh, he's 14 months old now, and we took him to daycare, and he caught a cold. So his mother decided no more daycare. <laughs> yeah, that's where they get it. And yeah, it's I, like I a little through, cult, little culture tube. So I went through three of them. Yeah, yeah, three boys. Every time they started daycare and school, we got sick too. Yeah. Well, listen, our prayers are with you, Vince, and uh, you okay. take care of yourself, okay, my friend? Yes, I know you don't have much time, but I... Yeah, we're ending up the show. May God bless, my friend. God bless you, you my bet. friend. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.